with another uh, starting Coco's 3D video and this time I want to talk about touches and uh, to that end I've just uh, changed one of the Blender projects to add a few extra objects uh, that's a sphere and a monkey called Suzanne and the two boxes in the front uh, actually have textures on them and I've exported all that in a geopod and brought it into a project which a uh, new project called Touching Stuff and in this project I have uh, three layers. I'll just uh, run it quickly there just to show basically. It's uh, based on a controllable layer called Main Menu. It runs three layers which each have their own scene. Touch layer, touch scene, gesture layer, gesture scene, ray layer, ray scene. And it opens up your touches and you can go back, gestures, and you can go back, and rays and you can go back, okay? This is essentially the basic project. And how it's implemented is uh, in the app de delegate. Um, I just uh, in the uh, setup code, I open the main menu node, and the main menu is a controllable layer, which just has that one um, method quiz current layer, which is the layer that's going to be entered as touch gestures are seen, array, and inside in the implementation of the controllable layer. There is a, uh, a label, a menu, an update of which scene has been used, it initializes, and there's this onEnter method which uh, calls the super onEnter, changes the color and adds a label or a menu. Um, the label is just the basic one you saw. The menu then is just the three items and whichever one is picked, that will call this uh, load required uh, section method. And the first thing that that does, uh, once it decides which section it's using, is remove the menu. Uh, that's kind of important because you don't want the menu hanging around in the background um, while you're working on touches on a touch there. Uh, just to illustrate that, in the, the previous one we did with Material World in one of the previous videos, if you run that um, the way we had it, we weren't really using it as uh, touches. So once the menu was uh, set up, you'd uh, open it up and whatever would happen would happen but if you were to just touch at different parts around you'll see that that menu is actually still active underneath the different uh, layers and scenes so uh, we can't have that so what you do is just make sure that it's cleared out um, by when the menu item is selected the menu is removed okay and then it has quick current layer which is if there's a layer active uh, it's called here to clear whatever is active on the controllable layer and go back to the onEnter method and that sets up the menu again. Okay, so uh, the first one we want to talk about is touches layer and that's just a CC3 layer and uh, the important part about this is it's got self user interaction enabled, yes, and setting that in the initialization controls uh, tells this layer that it's seen if it has a touch event method will be used okay so essentially in the layer it's telling it to use that it adds the scene and all the layer has there is just a back button that will get rid of the scene and go back and uh, use that quit current layer method on the controllable main menu in the scene itself um, it's uh, just a case of bringing in the um, pod and uh, the text box, the mix box are in the front, the one on the left is touch enabled, um, but the one on the right isn't. The sphere is not touch enabled, and the monkey is touch enabled. So when it comes down, when you touch, this touch event is called, uh, the basic one we're interested in is the touch began, and that once it is called will go pick node from touch event, that automatically calls in these layers this node selected. If the node is uh, enabled, it will uh, go past this and come down here and check which node it is. Uh, the text box on the monkey will cause it to call this node jump and uh, the method will make the particular thing that's selected to jump. So if you run this and just run the touch part of it, uh, you'll see that uh, those touches and uh, okay, he's enabled so he'll jump. If I press on the sphere, it'll go straight through the sphere and hit the next thing that's enabled, which is the monkey. Okay, if I press the monkey, it'll jump. Okay, press this guy, and nothing will happen. 
And you can see that on the console. Uh, if we go back, let's go back out of the way. That we have uh, the touch began and the touch ended method being called. The this uh, touch move method isn't uh, type isn't being called because that's not implemented in CC3 uh, layers. There's a whole blurb about that in the uh, mashup demo, and uh, interesting reading. Basically, it says uh, it uh, takes up an awful lot of uh, processing, and it really isn't all that important. And gestures really is the way to go if you want movements uh, in your scene. Okay. So that's uh, the touches in the gesture layer, another CC3 layer. In this case, user interaction enable is equal to no. So the, the will no, that touch method will not be called. Instead, what we do is uh, we set up a, uh, that's a link to the uh, gesture scene that's added here. And then when you open the layer, you add in these uh, high level UI kit uh, gesture recognizers. Um, there are, there's a few of them there, tap selector, swipe, two finger swipe, pinch. But the only one that I've done anything really with, I've, I've got all the, the required methods for them to uh, handle them. But the only one that's really going to do anything is the tap one. And uh, that is just a tap selector. One tap is required. This is important here, cancels, touches, and views set to no. Because if there's a menu item on the screen and you don't have that set to no, the tap selector will take that and the menu won't work. So it has to be set to know to make sure the menu uh, will work. Um, if the tap is uh, hit, it is the tap selection method that checks that it's a tap, checks uh, where the tap happened and basically goes then to the scene, the gesture scene, and again calls that node uh, picking uh, method, pick from node, and it gives it the touch point to pick from. So in this uh, gesture scene in the uh, implementation, because I've got uh, just ghost methods for running the pinching and uh, starting pinching, amount of pinching, swipes and stuff like that, they all have to be available in the header part of the scene so that they can be available to the layer uh, implementation. But the only one we're really interested in is already implemented and that's going to be the node uh, selected uh, method, which again runs pretty much exactly the same depending on which nodes are enabled. And in this case, I have the text box enabled, mix box not, sphere is, and the monkey is. So again, one in the uh, the app, we're going to go into the gestures layer. There is no interaction enabled as far as the layer is concerned, but because we have tap enabled, you can tap in and get them all to jump if they're enabled, as that one isn't. Okay, and also there's the if you look down below. You can see that there's a swipe by, and you can get all the gestures for. And if you look in the mashup demo, you'll see uh, how Bill uses those for uh, zooming in the camera and moving the camera and stuff like that. And any kind of interaction for an iOS game, particularly, should use the gestures way of doing things. Okay. And finally, the one thing I want to show you is uh, rays. Um, rays are kind of uh, vectors inside of the scene. So in this case, what we're talking about is you're touching uh, the screen. That's a two-dimensional point, and it, it takes a three-dimensional vector from that point through to the back of the scene, and anything that the ray hits is uh, considered fair game for the ray once it's enabled correctly. Uh, in this case, uh, you can use either taps or gestures to do this, or sorry, touches or gestures, uh, the one I've set up for here, uh, the taps or the touches, <laughs> I get that wrong, uh, are not enabled. So it's going to be the tap gesture that uh, sets this off. And uh, that'll uh, call the handle tap selection. And again, all it does is go to that node picking uh, method inside in the scene itself. And uh, in the ray scene, if you look again, what have we got enabled? Just the text box and touch enable. No, no, no. So down here in the, the touch event, uh, this won't be called this time because uh, interaction is not enabled. If it was enabled, you'd get this touch handling log, but what we should get is the, uh, sorry, I should have gone back and shown you that in the, uh, this tap gesture is handling this uh, log. Okay, so back in the scene, when the tap uh, gesture hits it, you get this node selected, uh, it checks if the node is enabled, if there is one enabled, it will hit the, this mark point um, method. 
And this is taken pretty much straight from the uh, demo uh, mashup. And essentially what it does is check there's a, a node there. And if there is, it sets up array. It checks uh, what nodes are on the array. It sets up a whole, um, which one is the closest, and a load of information about that. And this is very uh, useful uh, stuff here, showing you how to get information from the scene using these uh, NS string uh, from 3D vectors and stuff like that. Okay, the action in this one is going to be when it comes out here, it checks how many nodes are hit. Uh, if there's just one node hit, it'll just go through this loop once. It'll print out the information about it, and it will call this jump uh, node jump method. Um, and it just depends on how many there are. So if I hit the three nodes at once, what I should get is uh, the zero node, which is the closest one, with zero delay. The next node, which would be the next one, obviously, with a second delay and the following node which will be the uh, number two node with a two second delay uh, because of the array and there's no jump will go off and we should get them jumping in sequence depending on how they're hit and this was this rating is very useful for if you're modeling kind of a bullet going through a scene and you want to see what it hits off and it depends uh, on the trajectory of the bullet and you can do all that sort of thing and once you get the hang of it so if we run the whole thing, and we go and hit the ray. So you can see now if I touch it down at the bottom of the, uh, actually touching him does nothing, but if I touch it down at the bottom, you can see I've hit the sphere, but the ray hasn't hit anything else. If I go a little bit higher, it's got the sphere, uh, the uh, text box, and this time it's got the sphere as well. And if I go a bit higher, I got the all three. One, two, three, bam, bam, bam. Okay, so that's what rays are. Rays are kind of shooting through the scene to see uh, what's been hit. And uh, what I should have showed you, I'll just go back there and show you that just to show uh, where does it say the. Uh, that's the uh, the log there that tells you a tap gesture is handling it. Okay, so if I just go back, we'll close it down there a sec, go into the uh, ray layer, set that to yes. Run the thing again. And this time, right, and bang, up they go. And if you look down here on the log again now, this time it's got touch handling it. So depending on whether we got the user interaction enabled or not, it'll either pick the, uh, the touch method or the gesture method of tapping. Okay, so that's pretty much it for touching. I hope this will get you started so that you have an idea of what, if you go into the mashup demo, what uh, touching and gestures are all about and when is the appropriate time to use them. Uh, once you've got this start off, you should then be able to figure out the different uh, swipe uh, gestures and stuff like that and how they're used in the mashup demo. Okay, I'll uh, put the, uh, the classes for this file up on uh, YouTube and uh, if you just set it up uh, the way it is to um, a standard uh, template, go into the app delegate and connect it up to the main menu and you should be uh, ready to go. And I'll stick up the boxes to uh, part as well. Okay, good luck.